Today's Wednesday, November 27, 2013, and you're tuned into the Elevator Radio Show. And tomorrow is Thanksgiving. Everybody got a great show for you today, so stay tuned. Here it comes. You're tuned in to the Elevator Radio Show, a weekly program dedicated to covering news and information on elevators, escalators, and moving walkways. Produced in the wee hours of the morning, a new show is uploaded every Wednesday, sometimes even before you get out of bed. Listen to some of the comments sent in from our audience. Rob from New York writes, Tom, are you f***ing insane? You actually get up at 2 a.m. each Wednesday to put this show out? Man, you must love elevators. Tim from Illinois writes, I'm not sure why I listen, but ever since I tuned into the first show back in 2007, I've been addicted. Matt in Texas writes, I like your safety messages, Tom. It's important to remember them each and every day. And he also adds, When am I going to win the monthly prize pack giveaway? Ron from California sent this in. Despite your inability to pronounce words in the English language, I tune in each week and am glad that you offer this service to the industry. It's better than Google News Alerts. Sarah from Washington writes, Love the show, Tom, and look forward to it each week. I'm glad I signed up for the newsletter. You provide a valuable resource for the industry, not only for North America, but worldwide. Enjoy the show. And now, here's your sleep-deprived host, Tom Seibert. Thank you. Thank you. Enough, enough. I know. I know everybody's excited to be here so early this morning. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Our canned audience always amazes me. Hey everybody, I am Tom Cyber. It is great to be here this Wednesday morning where we are uh, producing the show early, early in the morning. Um, yeah, another hard, tough morning to get up. I don't know what it is about these short weeks, but they kind of throw me for a loop. Uh, got up, oh shoot, about 2.30, and I just laid in bed for about a half an hour. I'm like, oh, it feels so good and so warm. And uh, for good reason, it's uh, 16 degrees outside, and I know that there are other places that are much worse off than the Midwest here, as uh, pretty torrential, pretty terrible weather has uh, kind of blanketed the entire East Coast, creating basically a media frenzy uh, as every single story that seems to be on the news is the terrible weather that is going to, I don't know, pretty much take over the world uh, as the media, media is uh, basically puts it out there. So it's great. But I know there is some pretty treacherous weather over on the East Coast between snow and rain and sleet and rain. Uh, in New York, Pennsylvania, everybody out in that area, uh, please travel safe. And, um, and also, those of you who are headed into it, be careful. Uh, absolutely be careful and, and, and travel safe. But, you know, I mean, if we all just use our heads and, and do our best to travel safe and, you know, don't rush it too much, that is definitely, uh, you know, the best way of going. I myself am heading up to, uh, to the north woods of Wisconsin later on today. With where we will spend tomorrow Thanksgiving with our family. Uh, got a couple of birthdays to celebrate, which is going to be awesome. Really looking forward to it. It's one of those. It's one of those trips where, as a child, it's one of my earliest memories is heading up to Northern Wisconsin, and uh, you know, kind of getting out of school a little bit earlier than most kids did on a Wednesday, and then driving straight through in the and in, in my mom and dad's station wagon, and just looking forward to getting up there to see my grandma. Um, you know, the, the song over the river and through the woods to grandma's, grandmother's house we go is one of those that I always enjoyed <laughs> singing in the back of my head as we did this. But yeah, always exciting. Uh, many occasions we get our Christmas trees up there and then bring them back. So, uh, I, it's fun that we're able to uh, share that with our, our family. Um, and it's going to be, it's gonna be awesome. We're going to be big family packed into a, to a small, a, a small house filled with love and uh, really can't can't wait. Uh, so, um, but it'll be a short trip. Obviously, you know, you drive seven eight hours away for three days. It it makes for a tiring week next week uh, as we kick off December. So, uh, as you all probably have already read, if you want to take a moment to go over to elevatorradioshow.com, click on the uh, show notes link, and that will kind of give you uh, the the recap of of what I'm thankful for. I'm thankful for all of you out there, mechanics inspectors, consultants, contractors. I greatly appreciate all of you and your support that you've shown over the years. Obviously, without you, I would not. I'd be talking to myself, which sometimes I feel like I am, especially with my kids. Anyway, 
Uh, but yeah, it's good to be here, and uh, thank you to everybody to uh, for everything that you have uh, supported me in. And you know, take a moment this holiday season to think about what you're thankful for, no matter how bad or how stressful it might be for you. It's got to be better than how some people are 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 out there. So uh, just keep that in mind. And uh, as we head into December and the end of the year, and you know, just a stressful time. So uh, just just take a moment to be thanks thankful for for what you've got. Even if it's not a lot, or if it's too much, or whatever. So, and trying to get too stressed out over uh, over your family, if that seems to be the way that it all goes. Try to take a different approach on it this year. So, anyway, I realize that probably many of you out there are tuning into the program either on the road, or maybe over the weekend, or from a distant lo- excuse me from a distant location. So, uh, if you are picking up the program after Thanksgiving, I hope hopefully you enjoyed it and you are resting and recuperating. Uh, anyway, we'll, we'll have a show next week. Just as a reminder, we do have a prize pack giveaway we will be giving away at the end of the program. Um, and uh, so stay tuned for that. As a reminder, the way of winning that is just becoming a subscriber over on the Elevator Radio Show uh, website. And let me just do switch over on the screen capture here so you can actually look at that. Bear with me one moment here. Let me get that up. For those of you watching the video uh, channel, and YouTube or Blip or whatever. Um, okay, so if you go over to you know elevatorradioshow.com, right-hand column link, you can either do it on the subscribe to blog via email. You'll get an email as soon as there is an update, or you can go down and uh, click on the uh shoot elevator radio show category and there's an elevator radio show newsletter there and all you got to do is put your put your 411 in there yeah how cool is that so anyway feel free to do that and again we give away a prize pack giveaway at the end of every every uh month and uh, again some great companies have donated some uh some good stuff there so uh, and again so if you can deal with one email from me a, a, a month that's 52 I don't do anything with your information I don't sell it I don't capture it I don't send it to anybody it's all private so it's it's probably one of the only email lists that I, that I well that I don't not share I don't mean to say it that way but one that I covet and one that I will never ever share uh, because I value you all as well as the emails that you receive. So, hey, how many of out how many of you out there have received all of the Black Friday emails? I swear they're killing me with them. I and I'm not even a big Black Friday person. Uh, but if you are wanting to avoid all that, uh, there's some good opportunities to get some elevator gear if you want to put these on your Christmas list. I haven't talked about this in a while, uh, but the uh, there's a couple of fun stores. Uh, Elevator Bob's online store is over there. I hope Elevator Bob is doing okay. I haven't heard from him in a while. and um, But yeah, he's got some cool goodies over on his website and uh, also the Elevator Radio Show uh, website that you can check out that also has some gear if you're interested in getting a cool shirt like the Got Lift shirt. Here it says, uh, you know, kind of uh, after the Got Lift theme. So um, anyway, if you want to get one of those, all of the proceeds which is basically everything's marked up $5, goes back to the Elevator Escalator Safety Foundation. And we really haven't had too much activity there, mainly because I haven't been kind of chatting about it. Also, the EESF has a good search link. So if you're going to be shopping online, I encourage you to go over and uh, link through some of the stores to see if you qualify or any of those. Any of those purchases could go back to, uh, or a portion of them go back to the uh, Safety Foundation. So just a reminder uh, for that. So anyway, let's get to the email comments. Again, thanks. I was surprised how many that we had. Not a ton, but still um, cool to see those of you reaching out. Um, Carl, hey, thanks uh, for the for the uh, nice comment about, you know, doing better. I am doing better. Those of you who are wondering about how my shoulder's doing, you know, I had a couple of days there. It was feeling great. Got back on the bike, was riding on the trainer, and then it just, I don't know, I feel like it, there's like a big block or something stuck in there with screws sticking through my neck. Anybody know if that's normal? Because <laughs> I don't think until my doctor breaks his clavicle and, you know, goes through the same thing, I don't think he can really understand what the heck this is all about. But, yeah, thanks, Carl, for that. Uh, Rowan, you sent me an email regarding show number t- um, the one on October 9th. I don't know what elevator you're talking about. It says, where was that old elevator from Massachusetts located again in Massachusetts? I have no idea which one that is. I went back to the show notes. I'm not quite sure which one that is. So send me a link and tell me which one that is. 
Um, Angelo, thank you for your email regarding the um, the migration of the of the show. I, we are still working on that. I'll let you know how that goes. I uh, got a press release here that I did cover on the program. Some pretty cool news from Chicago. Uh, those of you in the Chicagoland area, I don't know if you know this, knew this or not, but this is coming from Dan. Uh, Urban Elevator Company actually sent a truck with emergency supplies to help the weather damaged area of Washington, Illinois, which is awesome. If you can imagine a tornado hitting your town and then like two days later, everything freezing and snowing and stuff like that. So again, we did mention on the, on the program last week about donating to the American Red Cross if interested. So um, yeah, I think that's awesome. So, so, uh, Dan, thanks for sending me that. I was not aware, and it, it, it's awesome of Urban uh, Elevator to have uh, stepped to the plate like that. So, good job. Wish we could have done that collectively through our industry, but, I, you know, it seemed like they got enough help right off the bat. But I did, you know, I, I have been in contact with some people who, who have actually, in that area, that have actually helped in those, uh, those towns that were hit. Not only Washington, but there were others that were, you know, pretty badly... Uh, affected by tornadoes so they are slowly recuperating again amazing that there weren't more fatalities and injuries from that uh bob wrote in and said he had a three-story building in west virginia and the in the building is an operating freight elevator circa 1920 or earlier it has a 10,000 pound capacity and 10 foot by 8 foot lift platform cage motors mechanisms are very big it's it's lift it lifts 24 feet Man. Anyway, at some point I, I may tear the building down. Do you know anyone that might be interested in this unit? You know, Bob, unfortunately, there's really no market for anything old like this other than for salvage or repair parts if, you know, it's an older unit. But nobody is going to buy this elevator unit from you or take it out and then basically give you money for it to put it in their own building. It wouldn't meet current code, um, and it's extremely dangerous to attempt to do if there are, you know, if you're if if it's a salvage company or somebody that's not an elevator company doing it, so um, kind of scary. I don't have any good news for you. It's still cool stuff, and if you could salvage some of the equipment, and put it on eBay, I think you'd find uh, some people who would be interested. Mike sent an email in. I'm going to show you this photograph. Uh, bear with me here. Okay, we transfer over. Mike wants to know if we'd be anybody would be interested in the um, all of these cool items. There's some. Uh, Oh, it looks like some floor plates, Stanley Elevator, Westinghouse, Otis, uh, FS Payne, GE, a bunch of data plates, some lanterns, and a couple Otis uh, floor plates, and then a dial indicator. These are pretty significant items. Mike, as a collection, I don't think anybody would buy it as a collection because I don't think they'd have enough money to do so. But I'd have to say that, um, you know, if you parted them on eBay, you'd probably get somewhere around $1,100, $1,200 Maybe a little bit more, maybe 15, uh, if you allowed people to bid on them individually and did not set a, a minimum reserve. I think you'd find some takers on these. So, uh, But yeah, if, if you're watching the video right now, you can take a look at and see what that all looks like. Um, and I can't link that up in the show notes, unfortunately, but we'll see if we can't get it on some other site. Um, Joe, thanks for the email. Haven't heard from you in a while. It's it's uh, And thanks to uh, for uh, letting me know that... Um, <laughs> That you're glad to see I'm up and about. Um, and no worries on not being able to keep up to date on the shows. Don't worry about it. But uh, I like your comment. I see that the elevator industry has some, and some of the inspection firms are still pointing the fingers at one another. Um, and this is in regards to an escalator accident we'll talk about in a little bit. And in the end, we don't know what causes these accidents and what the industry can do to prevent similar accidents. And anyway, a good show. Have a great Thanksgiving, Joe Morrissey. And you know, Joe, you're right. We're not, uh, I don't think we'll ever move uh, you know, forward. In terms of trying to minimize, um, I guess, accidents that have a cause that could be corrected, unfortunately. I don't think, you know, I, we, we here in America, we just live in a such a litigious society that, uh, you know, moving forward to prevent these from happening is, uh, I don't know. I mean, things will be, things will happen to do that, but ultimately... Everybody's going to point the finger at each other, and we'll get into that story, you know, a little bit. And you're absolutely right. You know, hit the nail on the head with this one. I'm just surprised it made it this far out into the media. So, anyway, as always, if you want to send emails over, send them over to Elevator uh, Radio Show at gmail dot at gmail dot com, and uh, love to hear from you. So, anyway, that should do it. Oh, just as a reminder, I forgot to talk about this. Um, 
Real quick, next week is the Chicago Elevator Association Christmas or holiday party. Uh, and that's going to be held on the 5th. Go over to the CEA website. I do. That is linked up on their website, CEA dash, not slash, but dash online.org. And you can, uh, you can RSVP to that. Members are one member is free. And then if you're not a member, you got to pay. And then if you're, uh, if you're a member and have a, have a, an attendee, it costs money. Anyway, check it out. Link is on the show notes on that. So anyway, send your emails, elevator radio show at gmail.com. Up next is the news let this week's news stories give you a lift on what's happening in the vertical transportation arena each news segment is organically dug and fresh with news stories of the week got lift if not stay tuned all right if you want a fun little animated gif to to play around with click on the happy turkey uh, image and it will actually light up isn't that exciting yeah so exciting (laughs) Anyway, I thought you'd enjoy that. Um, anyway, first news article, child cr- I was going to say child crushed, was not the case. Child rushed uh, to, let's see here, it's coming from carolinalive.com, let me just point the source out. Not much information on this, I hope everything is okay. This was actually posted uh, yesterday in, in the afternoon, I don't have any more information as of this morning. Emergency officials responded to a condo complex on North Dogwood Drive. Um, anyway, after a child got stuck in an elevator, uh, officials say the child was trapped in the elevator between two floors. We are working to get more information, which they haven't quite done. So I'm assuming everything's okay and uh, nobody was hurt, so I don't really know. Okay, this is great. And the reason why you have elevator cameras or cameras in an elevator to minimize your risk and liability, and this is also a great idea to have on any escalator system, and or at least make the recommendations. Obviously, none of us are CTV, whatever, you know, closed caption TV people or security people for that matter. So the reality is, is that if you can provide your, if you're a contractor and you can provide your, your, um, you know, your clients with information on how to protect themselves, this is a great idea. So anyway, here's a man who said he fell on a banana peel in Metro Station, accused of fraud, and he had been caught on camera, uh, as, as opposed to not, um, you know, basically slipping on anything or falling in an elevator. And uh, this is awesome, because people like this need to be charged with fraud and need to be taken uh, basically to... Uh, you know, to task, because the reality is that if we can stop these kind of litigious uh, accidents or, you know, this is going to make all the difference in the world because when it comes right down to it, when somebody says the elevator dropped three floors and your microprocessor or your controller, you have no, there's no way of verifying that or there's no way of proving that it did. You know, it's basically their word against, uh, you know, the, the elevator systems and guess who a jury is going to believe? Just guess. Yeah, exactly. Let's do our best to try to minimize these types of accidents. And who knows, maybe someday, maybe someday, not too far off, we'll find that, um, you know, lawyers don't want to pick these kind of accident cases up because they are just not pay, you know, they're not ones that pay off. We'll see. So anyway, in Sweden, this is kind of a real serious, uh, well, this is not kind of, this is a real serious accident that occurred. Apparently, a man was crushed to death in an elevator accident. This comes from the local.se source or news source. And apparently, uh, he was inside a uh, boat and started working on top of the elevator, went inside to repair it, and apparently it started moving upward and he was crushed to death. Oh, that is awful. That's just awful. I don't know how big the ferry was, but... Um, yeah, not good news. Make sure you're you're careful out there. Obviously, uh, shipboard elevators are required to have, are you know are are required to meet codes. So um, I don't know. Not a good not a good situation. Okay, uh, two people rescued from a stalled elevator. Apparently, uh, Mass Live has an article in regards to um, two people being uh, stalled or stuck or temporary restrained in a Hamden Superior uh, Court building. And they were okay. Elevator's been fixed. Uh, let's see how long they were in there for. Not quite sure. Uh, 45 minutes. Yeah, kind of scary when they start pulling people out through the, uh, you know, through the top or, you know, obviously opening the doors when there's space underneath. Kind of scary. So, uh, Turkey's 100-year-old elevator. I just wish that this article actually showed the elevator because I wonder if the elevator inside is actually 100 years old other than just the building. So, Anyway, this is this uh, article from worldbulletin.net. 
Talking about the outdoor elevator at Izmir is only one of many such structures in countries such as Portugal, Switzerland, Brazil, China, and the U.S. Pretty cool. I haven't seen too many in the U.S. Um, I have to say that the one in at the uh, uh, Toronto, not Toronto, but uh, Niagara Falls is the one that I think of when I uh, when I think of these kind of buildings. Okay, Kone Escalator, um, or Kone Kone and their eco-efficient escalator was honored with Top Innovation Award, um, and this was one of uh, among the 300 products considered. The Kone Transma- Transit Master stood out for its innovation in eco-efficiency, safety, and design. And that's great. That's something that I think transit systems definitely need. So congratulations to Kone for being uh, awarded that uh, innovation award. And that's uh, from Pierre Newswire. Okay, freak lift mishap kills 10-year-old in Mumbai, India. 10-year-old boy was killed in a freak elevator a- a mishap. Uh, on Tuesday, the boy was stuck in the elevator during a power cut, was dragged along when power resumed. When, oh, jeez. Oh, this is awful. This is about as awful as it can be. And thank goodness there are there are uh, consultants out there like Tech Matthews who, who, uh, who do their best each and every day to ensure that elevators are safe. So... Man, that's awful. I just envision this, and it just gives me the willies. Like, you know, it's awful, 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 awful. Solution to elevator issues in the works. Al.com or Alabama.com has um, uh, this is the kind of a uh, response to oh the elevator that people were stuck in Mobile, Alabama, um, two weeks ago. Let's see here. They were. Uh, people that were in track oops oh i just spilled my coffee <laughs> oh geez i hate when that happens <laughs> thank goodness it's not on my lap we can clean that up later anyway uh but yeah apparently they are looking at uh they are looking at uh making improvements to ensure or to minimize uh s- minimize elevator shutdowns in the future but this is going to happen unfortunately it just it just kind of you know, it's uh, elevators are designed to stop working if something, if they sense something is not safe or something's not right. In the good old days, this wasn't uh, necessarily the case. So uh, just keep that in mind. That's something that uh, basically is not touched on by many media outlets when they cover people getting entrapped or, or stalled in elevators. So uh, humorous, enticing poet attracts overflowing crowd. I posted this and I forgot why I did. I'll let everybody read this on their own, thenewsrecord.com. What in the world did I post this? had something to do with elevators in it, but I don't remember what. So maybe not. Anyway, all right. It's early. Remember that. Okay, uh, Andrew's got a new video uh, of a elevator, a elevate tour, a tour uh, at the um, University of Texas Austin building. Let everybody check that out on their own as this ad loads up, and I don't want to get through that. Um... Okay, as we are entering the Thanksgiving holiday season, 24 hours at the world's busiest airport. Hey, how many of you out there have heard the media talk about the world's busiest airport? I thought Chicago was it, but apparently Atlanta is it, and I don't know how they determine this. But if you're flying today or tomorrow or have already flown to get to your destination for the holiday, how I mean, how bad was it out there? Because I, have, I envision it not being that bad. Obviously, when you have bad weather, that's kind of what makes it worse but you know as you click on these links here and it makes me not want to travel whatsoever but it's not so bad um but yeah i like atlanta a lot these are some kind of cool photographs and uh yeah hopefully what the heck is that oh it's a it's a door okay that's kind of cool anyway let everybody check this out on their own uh kind of a, a cool day in the life of the atlanta airport and again probably many of you might even see this airport today or tomorrow or on sunday or on saturday for that matter so anyway um yeah kind of interesting okay with aging population elevators more popular in new homes this is kind of the uh this is I don't know, i've been saying this for quite some time but still it's nice to see that this segment of the market is actually picking up a little bit uh based on you know new home sales and uh good to see so and uh, i gotta say that Residential elevators have come not a long way in safety, but it's encouraging to see that um, elevators are definitely being considered for for newer homes, again, when they're being put in. So, I don't know. When I retire, part of me just wants to move to a, to a ranch 
you know, something I don't have to navigate stairs with, but I don't think that's going to be, uh, be possible. Um, excuse me, girl released from hospital months after accident. This is the little girl who got her foot trapped in an escalator at the Macy's. Um, it's hard to believe that she's been in the hospital that long. Terrible, terrible accident. And, um, you know, obviously more information. We talked, to, we talked about this on last week's program. And, um, you know, they cite the escalator was 58 years, lo years old. And I, I, the next article, I think, touches on that as well. Maybe not. Uh, but it's good to see she's going home for the holidays. And we hope that she has a speedy recovery. Um, apparently a five-year-old boy was injured in fall from escalator. The NewsStraitTimes.com reporting or NST.com.my. I don't know quite where this is. I didn't do the research. Coda Samarahan. That's not the guy's name. I think that's boy's name. I think that's where it's at. But apparently a five-year-old boy was injured when he fell down a moving escalator while horse playing with her older brother at the shopping com complex here today. Okay. I have to tell you that n I don't know what percentage it was, but I want to go on a limb here and say that 99% of uh, escalator accidents, maybe 95 should have been prevented by just rider behavior or how to ride it safely, honestly, and, and not playing on it as it's a, a, a playground. Um, and, and basically what they think happened here is, and it's happened before, the little boy was playing on or just touching the escalator handrail. And David Cooper, actually, who did a study on this and a report, and I sat in on this a few years ago, uh, has video footage of little boys being pulled over, over the handrail just by touching it. And in the, you know, the end result is awful to watch that on video. So just terrible. Anyway, we hope that he's going to, to be okay. I don't even know if he got dragged down or if he fell over or what, but it's, uh, either way, it's not a good not a good situation, and it's unfortunate. We, we, you know, do we have to put signage up that says this is not a toy, this is not a, uh, you know, piece of playground equipment? I mean, I don't know. Education, I think, at this point is going to be the best way of uh, dealing with it. Okay, and ask a landlord article here. This is funny because they've got the uh, uh, <laughs> a post of, oh, I forgot the show, but where the elevator is always out of order. And if you're not sure what, why this elevator is out of order. <laughs> It's because they blew it up with a bomb by accident. But anyway, uh, this is somebody writing and ask a landlord, fixing an always broken elevator, new paint for your long time apartment. And being somebody who's never had de to deal with a landlord, I got to tell you, and, and dealing with my wife's landlord, um, I got to tell you that the ones that I've dealt with are just scum. And if you're a landlord and you're not this way, and I, and I realize you've got tenants that are scum too, but I've never met a landlord. Actually, no, I shouldn't say that. I have met some nice landlords. Okay, I'll take that. But anyway, somebody's writing in is, uh, uh, is a landlord building owner required to keep an elevator in working condition in, a part, in an apartment building? Um, it's, yeah, here we go. It's cute on Big Bang Theory that their elevators has always been out of service. But in my historic building in Hollywood, um, it is quite difficult for upper floor residents since March 2012. The elevators are routinely out of service, several instances for up to 22 days. Many times people get stuck inside and the fire department must be called to get them out. Is the elevator required to have an inspection permit posted within it? There's no signage in our elevator. Hmm. Anyway, um, and there's a response here in regards to submitting a complaint. But in reality, it just says, it sounds like a real pain. And a broken elevator in high rise certainly goes without... Uh, to what a reasonable person would call habit, habit, habitability. <laughs> All right, habitability. I didn't say that right. It doesn't sound right. Anyway, not cute. Um, however, the California Tennis Handbook is silent on elevators. It may be time to play hardball and file a complaint with the, with the city. Code enforcement for multifamily residential dwellings is handled by Housing and Community Investment. Um, but yeah, an elevator from 1920 might need some work. Or uh, an elevator company that that actually knows what they're doing to work on it. Obviously, uh, you got situations where uh, some companies are better at working on uh, e certain equipment than others. So um, anyway, it does become increasingly more difficult to keep elevators working depending on the on the conditions they are in. 
Uh, so came in and in hospital after fall. The Sydney Morning Herald reporting that um, he fell in an escalator fall at Cockle Bay. Uh, and investigations are underway into a fight which took place at Martin Place uh, early Saturday that left a 22-year-old man with head injuries. All right. So, again, horseplay taking place in this situation and, uh, you know, always going to lead to somebody getting hurt. And if it involves anything with being pushed through doors or elevator doors or whatever, uh, not not good at all. Another accident to report in Atlanta, CBS, Atlanta.com reporting that a man was hurt after an escalator accident at the Georgia Dome. Let's see if we can play this without a, uh, a huge thing. For a limited time, get two toasty sausage All McMuffins right. with egg sandwiches. For two toasty muffins with three bucks. Go to McDonald's in Atlanta. Well, Tracy, he says that he actually sprained his knee and he actually may have torn some ligaments. He says this all happened in an escalator right here near the top level of the D gates. And he says he was not the only one on that escalator. Saints Falcons Thursday night prime time. It doesn't get any better. Yeah, good football game, good rival game. Marcus Degal says the night was great until the Falcons lost. And New Orleans beats Atlanta here tonight, 17-13. Real disappointing. But he says things got worse when he decided to head home. I told my father, I said, hey, you know, let's just wait on on the crowd and not go. You know, he's like, nah, let's get out of here. As soon as we step on the uh, escalators, man, free fall. Yeah, runaway escalators. And we uh, had to jump off. Marcus says there were dozens of other fans on the escalator with him as he left the upper level of the stadium near the D gates. And the first thing I'm thinking about is, you know, I've heard stories of people having their toes and feet chopped off you know, on escalators. So that's the first thing I'm thinking about, you know, after it first happened. So I'm like, you know, when we get to the bottom, I'm going to make a jump for it. My dad also had to jump. Marcus says he twisted his knee when he stepped on the escalator and it took off and he aggravated it further when he jumped off. He says first responders helped about eight people who were hurt. There was a woman in front of me um, with a child. Uh, she was pregnant. She appeared to be like nine months pregnant. That woman told a CBS Atlanta photojournalist she planned to go to the hospital to get checked out. Marcus says he hopes something is done so no one will have to experience what he did ever again. And I'm a pretty tough guy, and I don't get scared of a lot of stuff, but, you know, I was pretty terrified. Yeah, that's not good. Now, we checked with the Georgia Dome, and they are looking into what happened. The spokesperson said they're checking with engineers to get more information. We'll tell you what they have to say coming up all new at 5 o'clock. For yeah, now. That's kind of scary, right? Not something we want to hear about. And I, I suspect that the maintenance company is... Uh, you know, doing what they can to ensure that doesn't happen again if the thing hasn't been totally, uh, you know, sealed off to begin with. But, yeah, overload, not overload, you can't really overload an escalator. Apparently, well, I guess you can in this case. But, yeah, not, not a good situation. You think about the amount of weight that these things move. And, you know, if not, whatever the reason, if not properly maintained or inspected or whatever, leads to some uh, uh, some issues or product failure, for that matter. Um, anyway. Okay, next news article coming from the Elevator World Unplugged website. Um, bad behavior in office elevator. Career builder asks asked workers what they consider to be the most egregious. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I said that word. Thank you. I need I need an applause button right there. <laughs> Behaviors on elevators. They may not be career breakers, but these annoying behaviors certainly won't help the offenders standing in the office. BaselineMag.com has highlighted the five most outrageous acts from the survey. And um, anyway, you can check those out. Link is in the show notes. And apparently the 32% uh, of workers get annoyed by people who stand too close to them, even when there's plenty of room. <laughs> I don't know. I don't ever think there's enough room in an elevator, to be honest with you. Not that I have any kind of phobia for uh, for being in a small space or anything. But just still, it's <laughs> they don't seem too big. Okay. Overloaded detention center, elevator stall 17. I don't know. Tell me if I'm wrong, but that seems like a lot of people. CJOnline.com in Topeka has an article. 17 visitors at the Shawnee County Juvenile Detention Center were stuck in an overloaded elevator for about 82 minutes earlier this week, an official said on Friday. Yeah, that's a lot of people. Anyway, um, let's see how long they were stuck in here. 
Uh, yeah, 2,100 pound capacity. It froze between the building's second and third floors to keep it from falling. So it did what it was supposed to do. So instead of writing, obviously when elevators, um, you know, fail to or stop for whatever reason, it's good to note that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. This is kind of a scary story. I don't know if I touched on this last week or not. I think I might have, but my memory is uh, kind of blurry. Ah, maybe two weeks ago. Anyway, apparently an elevator accident in Lady Severs Man's hands is a mechanic that was working on an elevator at the 1317th Street um, in Rosslyn. And it's kind of scary that this could have happened, but um, apparently uh, his hand got stuck between... Yes, yeah, God. Accident partially amputated his hand. Oh. You know what? For those of you out there that think mechanics make too much money, man, they, they earn every penny of it. That's all I can say. It's, it's dangerous work. It sure is dangerous work. So do it safely. And do it well and do it right, damn it. And do it for eight hours a day. Or ten. All right. Gayphilly.com, article, Patco Escalator Down Too Long, officials say. Broken Escalator Patco's busy 8th and Market Street station have been out of service too long and must be repaired promptly, said Jeffrey Nash, vice chairman of the board that oversees the commuter rail line. New people are going to be working on it Monday, Nash said Thursday, and they've ordered the part they need to install it. North Escalator has been broken since August, one of the several out-of-service escalators and elevators that have been plagued for uh, the line for months, and um, anyway, they said damage. Said a damaged shaft needs to be replaced. It's unacceptable. My apologies to the riders. Nash said we are going to make changes. Fresh eyes are going to uh, going to be looking at this. I just wonder, do you guys think out there that <laughs> these kind of canned statements are just ready to go, like for the media? Because obviously, there's got to be something more behind this story uh, and other stories relating to anything that regards the public out there you know what i mean so that's what i wonder because of what i hear septa has some other there's some other you know elevators out there that need some repair and i don't know maybe it's not being done but i've got people sending me emails and some of this stuff looks like it's just falling apart so you know equipment needs maintenance it does it definitely needs maintenance and if if uh, if agencies out there haven't budgeted for that or properly or are not holding those accountable for that kind of stuff, then it's uh, obviously, you know, I think it's a problem. I think it's a problem for sure. Getting okay, into elevator and subway commutes, the New York Times reporting that uh, in Winchester, an elevator, uh, an end to elevator and subway commutes. This is an article talking about, um, oh gosh, it doesn't really have much to do other than the fact that uh yeah i don't really i shouldn't have linked that article up it doesn't really talk about stuff i didn't read that before i did anyway okay this is the article i was talking about new jersey or nj.com um this is the one that joe was saying hey we're all pointing the finger at each other in this case um it's not necessarily our industry doing it but it is the actual state and whoever but anyway inspectors of escalate inspector of escalator that injured this little girl who's getting in the hospital in order to stop work in paramus paramus and hackensack superior court judge menelas tuscos on tuesday ordered a municipal inspection corporation of bayon to stop inspections in the paramus pending a hearing next month the recorder the record the record reported man that was hard and I've only had two cups of coffee, one of which is spilled on my desk. Anyway, the company formed. The company formerly worked uh, there through another company to uh, took over inspections. Anyway, the borough alleged in court papers that the municipal inspection corporate violated its contract by not telling uh, Paramus building officials that a March 6th inspection of escalators to the Macy's store in the Garden State Plaza was interrupted by the manager. And this is the case where the manager said, you're, you got to come back some other time because you're disrupting uh, customers. My question here is this. You know, in so many states, inspectors are given, you know, they're treated in a whole different light than contractors are. And they should have the, have the um, authority to, they do have the authority to red tag equipment. 
when it's not safe. I'm assuming this is the same case for third-party equipment. I mean, third-party inspections. But the reality is, is that no customer is worth is really worth um, this, you know, in terms of where this resulted in an accident. So I don't know what in the contract said that they have to contact um, somebody that they couldn't perform these. I don't know. The, the reality is, is that if this thing happens, you know, get a signature from some, some guy or some manager who is doing this, who says, hey, you can't, prefer, you can't perform maintenance now. In that case, you either say, I have to do it now, or you sign this paper saying that you are held accountable or liable if you send me away. And same for the inspections. I mean, honestly, I don't, I mean, obviously it's not going to get um, fix the solution, but, you know, come on. Really? Um, anyway. Yeah, it's, um, it's too bad, and I'm sure we're going to hear more about this at the hearing. I'm certain that we will, and I look forward to finding out what the uh, what officials um, are going to figure out. So let's see here. Bear with me. My screen froze up. By the way, the computer is working awesomely. Thanks to Owen for his hard work. It did take a little while to get everything dialed in, and get all my cores reconnected and all that good stuff and hopefully you are all enjoying a uh, show without me oh man don't oh i got the wrong web address there enjoying the show although last week the conversion of it onto um uh <laughs> the upload took forever i don't know why come on there we go bear with me here people there we go posts all new posts all posts let me shut that down. Let me preview this link. Here we go. Almost done. All right. Next news article. Scroll down. Sesame Street elevator segment. How many of you out there have watched or grown up watching Sesame Street? <laughs> Brad's got a real funny post talking about uh, um, <laughs> spending a significant amount of time with, uh, with his two small nieces. Does that make one have kids, Brad? <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't i'm just kidding i remember being an uncle or or when i didn't have kids wasn't married and had you know was charged with watching my nieces or helping watch my nieces for the weekend and i think part of the deal was is i felt like i had to entertain them but i love seeing elevators in sesame street or online or in the blacklist or whatever it's just cool to see it really uh you know obviously just warms my heart so this this is pretty a great blog post I encourage you to um uh, to check check it out when you get a chance, and if you've got little ones, maybe this will actually uh, uh, light up their life, or their, you know, not up their life, but make them happy as well as you're headed to wherever. Uh, and John's got a great segment on how elevator controller, how an, an elevator controller microprocessor works. Um, John's got some great videos over there, some educational and tutorial ones. So, uh, John, keep up the good work. I really enjoy watching them and. Um, Love you, I'd love to have you on the show sometime. Keep it up, and thanks for sharing your expertise with the world because there's going to be a day when nobody knows how to work on a really logic controller or anything older than something from 1990 or 95 or 2000. I'm telling you, that's where we're going, man. That's where we're going. And it's really unfortunate because we need to pass that information on to everybody out there So before those that don't know are gone. It's just that important because there's still that much information. There are still that many older, you know, pieces of equipment out there. So thanks and keep up the great work on that. And that's going to do it for the show, everybody. We are going to give our prize pack giveaway away now. It's a redundant word there. And okay, I just got to find my find my random number generator. Enter my low value, which is one, and my high value. And the winner is going to be 601. 601, you are the winner. Let me go backtrack, look at the email list. And let's see here. Okay, Ron. Ron from Florida. Looks like you are a person who loves elevator. Ron M. Uh, from the Orlando area. And a mechanic. So, Ron, thanks for everything that you do. Uh, and I will send you an email shortly confirming... Uh, your address to make sure it is new and valid 
and uh, you are the winner of a $100 Visa gift card just in time for the holiday season. And uh, as always, thank you for tuning in and supporting the show. So everybody have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Raise a glass and a toast to yourself and your family and everything that you've uh, done. Be thankful for everything that you have. And remember not to take anything for granted because it could change in a heartbeat. Okay? So and remember those or think of those that are currently going through any kind of medical issues or are recovering from injury or sickness or whatever and uh, be thankful if you have your th- if if you have your health uh, because that's not always something you can guarantee either so all right everybody have safe travels take care we'll talk to you next wednesday where i'll be i'm sure i'll be tired so take care everybody and um that's about it bye-bye